As a starter, let's look at the archetypical NP problem, namely satisfiability testing. Now, I'd say this problem is archetypical because it was the first problem shown to belong to the class of NP complete problems by Cook beginning of the 70s. Interestingly, the same result was obtained by Levin in the Soviet Union at the time, something that you can't imagine nowadays, right? Well, NP problems, another interesting thing about that is that these are the problems there where you give me a solution candidate and I can verify that your candidate is a solution in polynomial time. Sounds familiar, right? Hint, look at the stable model semantics. Okay, anyway, enough gossip, I zip it. Now let's look at satisfiability testing. What is it? Now, the problem as such is pretty straightforward. Check or test whether a propositional formula has a model or not. So if it has a model, the formula is satisfiable. Now, let's detail this a little bit. Now, first of all, one usually makes the assumption that the formula is in CNF, in conjunctive normal form. And this is a formula that is <clears throat> composed of a conjunction of disjunctions of literals. And then the goal is to find out whether it has a model or not. And you may recall these, our, our, our um, um, background slide on models and interpretations, assignments and solutions, right? And to formulate the whole thing in a more profane way, the, the, the question is, is there an assignment of propositional variables to true and false? that evaluates our formula to true. So let's look at an example, first of all, of a propositional formula in CNF. And here's one. So here we have a formula that is a conjunction of two disjunctions. And each disjunction combines a positive literal with a negative one. In our case, well, A and not A and not A and B. And a closer look may actually reveal what this formula expresses. It's equivalent actually to the formula A if and only if B. So A equivalent to B. And as a sneak preview, what, what models would you expect? Well, actually this formula is true if both A and B are true or if both A and B are false, right? Okay. Now, the other interesting thing about looking at this uh, uh, problem is that it is formulated under the open world assumption, right? And remember that stable model semantics works under the closed world assumption. So actually we have to do something to model the open world assumption in our approach in ASP. Let's look at this now. The corresponding logic program consists of four rules. Two rules making up the generator and two integrity constraints actually for the tester. Now let's first look at the generator. Now the generator consists of two choice rules that allow us to add A to a stable model or not. So recall that we have these choices and here actually we have, we have no lower bound, no upper bound. So we are free to add A or not and in the same way we are free to add B or not. So A and B are more or less exempt from the need to have a derivation, to have a proof. We can just decide to add A or B or not. And this is, or this implements our open world assumption on A and B. As a consequence, if we only take this generator here, it generates all possible interpretations over A and B, namely the empty set where A and B are false, the set where only A is true, the set where only B is true, and the set where both are true that contains A and B. Okay? Now, the tester eliminates counter models. It eliminates interpretations that are no models. Now, the first integrity constraint eliminates interpretations that would not satisfy the first disjunction because it says it must not be the case that A is false and B is true. Again, I repeat, it must not be the case that A is false and B is true because then this disjunction here would be false. And in the same way, with the second integrity constraint, it eliminates interpretations that are no models of the second disjunction. And in our case, um, both of them eliminate the model where only A is true and only B is true. Keep in mind that this is actually an equivalent saying that A if and only if B or A equivalent to B. So we have two models where both A and B are true and where both A and B are false. 
Okay, now something to note. First of all, the generator, this guy here, puts both A and B under the open world assumption. And you see in this way, if you want to model an ASP, you can just say, oh, some variables are treated under the open world assumption and the rest is treated under the closed world assumption. That's actually pretty cool uh, when modeling. In any way, generators are often modeled with uh, choice rules. The tester eliminates interpretations, that is, interpretations that are no models or also called counter models. And it is expressed negatively. Actually, with integrity constraints, there is a neat relationship to formulas in such a case. And let me just make this precise with this little example. So, each of these disjunctions here can be transformed uh, by applying the De Morgan rule. So, we more or less negate this condition and negate it again so that the logical content stays the same. Because in classical logic, again, a formula phi is equivalent to not not phi. That's the trick that I'm doing right now. Okay, let's do that. So, and, and then you see already here, but what this says, it must not be the case that A is false and B is true. This is more, well, this is more or less exactly what this integrity constraint is. It must not be the case that A is false and B is true. You can actually go even one step further and again, this is a bit more for the, for the people who have some have seen these, trans, these logical transformations. You can actually express negation. You can say, oh, a formula not phi is equivalent to phi implies the falsity, the always uh, false constant. So if I do that now, we get an implication which says, oh, if A is false and b is true this implies a contradiction this implies falsity and this is exactly what this rule here stands for right and you see as long more or less as you have just conditions like integrity constraints where you don't talk about derivability things are very close to classical logic such transformations here were uh, work in classical logic and don't mis be misled that this all always works with arbitrary formulas under the stable model semantics it worked with integrity constraints. But anyway, in this way you nicely saw actually how integrity constraints can be seen as conditions uh, expressed in classical logic and you saw the relationship. Anyway, that was satisfiability testing. Now let's look at our next example, which is the N-Queens puzzle.